Studios, the AusBiz COV is the key stuff you need to know about the day in business and finance. Welcome to the COV. I'm Daniel Okuye. And I'm Juliette Sarli. And Danny, a better day on the market today, although we have come off some of the earlier highs, but still holding around at 7,600 points on the ASX 200. Uh, absolutely. And uh, it's lovely to see some green on screen. Mm. We might see if we can get the SIBO 200 up as well to see how that index is closing. But it looks, there we go, up by, uh, well, 7.6 points or just over half a as you said, Jules, we did lose a little bit of that momentum into the afternoon session, but hey, we're not going to uh, turn our noses up at green on screen, are we? Absolutely not. And in fact, only a few sectors lower, consumer discretionary, telcos, energy. And uh, let's get to the three themes because the reason energy is falling is really with Santos sinking. So Woodside <laughs> walking away from that potential merger, which so many analysts we'd spoken to said, you know, this doesn't really you make, make a, a lot, lot of sense. <laughs> um, and it does seem that Woodside has decided that too, or at least its shareholders have told it that Woodside going one way, Santos going the other, and uh, Santos' weakness today really weighing on that overall energy sector. Absolutely. I'm just looking at the share price off by about 5.5% or 43 cents to $7.44 for Santos. Now, there was another change in the C-suite, and I don't think this was entirely expected, Jules, but we have seen Ross McEwen, NAB's CEO, mm. he's stepping down and we've got a new boss coming to NAB. Yeah, I used to work with Ross years ago and when he was at CBA and then I've spoken to him when he was he was at an Irish bank at some point or Royal Bank of Scotland. Yep, he's Royal such bank of a Scotland. lovely man. But yeah, he's uh, retiring, Got a, had a very, very distinguished career. He's going to be replaced by the bank's group uh, head of business and private banking, Andrew Irvine, who is only 46 years old. Uh, Big a, job. A mere pup. A mere pup, yes. <laughs> Two and a half million dollar salary including superannuation I read and, uh, and that half, transition will take over. $50 million. Wow. I wonder what the shareholders will stay or say about that one. That seems rather large but hey ho, oh, maybe that's Two and just... Two and a half million oh, a year. Sorry, sorry. I when you said 50 million sorry, I was like... Sorry, 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 no. sorry. My brain's not working. <laughs> Hello. Two and a half million annual salary, yes. We didn't, we didn't just give Andrew a pay rise. <laughs> We're not on the board of NAB, we can't do that. Um, speaking of reboot, China. <laughs> yeah, China rebooting. Uh, markets yesterday, very, very firm off the back of the fact that authorities are looking to come in and support the Chinese market. And we did see it in China and Hong Kong. And I think we, the Aussie dollar, we touched on it briefly yesterday mm. and the Australian market, definitely caught some risk on love today from on that. Yeah, well, let's have a look at the sectors. Uh, we mentioned most tracking higher today. Interest rate sensitive sectors really leading the way. The likes of real estate, utilities, Origin there up two and a half percent. I was just talking to your mate Tim Buckley, who's talking about, you know, how much movement is going on in these higher energy costs, which of course are being passed on to the consumer. Yeah, and let's have a look at some of the material stocks. Uh, we have seen BHP up by almost 1.3%, so back over that $46 level. Also, uh, the likes of Fortescue doing well and Rio Tinto. Uh, housing related stock, James Hardy. It's always funny to see that one sitting in that index. That's also off by about 2% today. Didn't realise it was in that index, mm. but there you go. Okay, A REITs uh, having a look at those. Goodman Group uh, Centre, Stockland Vicinity Centres, GPT all rising after we had the RBA, of course, leave rates on hold yesterday. Absolutely. So let's have a look at some of the top corporate stories. And as we were discussing, Woodside Energy has confirmed discussions with Santos to create that possible $8 billion giant have collapsed. And Woodside says that uh, conducts thorough due diligence for every opportunity and will only pursue a transaction that is value accretive for its shareholders. Well, BWP Trust was higher. It reported uh, a 5% gain in half year revenue. And uh, that was uh, the reason behind this gain today. Yeah, also too, I think they've kept uh, their, their dividend payment, mm. um, of which was also a positive. Uh, Dexas Industrial REIT also had their results out. Revenues up for the six months ending September. And uh, they did report a loss of $10.2 million. However, they have made the point that the full year results will be profitable. And GQG Partners. What a yeah. good performer. Yeah, funds under management, $120.7 billion, up 7.3%. And it's really price. interesting, Jules, because um, 
I have been discussing with so many guests that stock and it's just worth highlighting because it was trading on a 9% yield. Mm. Probably not now. <laughs> wow. All right. Let's welcome to the COB independent economist, Nikki Hartley. Nikki, always good to see you. I mean, your thoughts on the revamped RBA meeting, Michelle Bullock's press conference, and of course, the fact that they have held. Yeah, well, I think nobody was surprised by the whole decision, given um, inflation was under where they forecast. Retail trade has been very, very soft, um, particularly when you look at per capita spending. If we didn't have that population growth, we'd really be uh, in trouble in a, in, a, in a recession. So good thing we've got that to back us up. Um, it was interesting, you know, here was an opportunity for the media to get out there and, and really have a great um, question time, a Q&A with, with Michelle Bullock. I'm not sure that they entirely took the um, the opportunity that that they were that they were given. Some of the questions were a little bit strange, um, but I thought she handled herself terrifically. She um, gave you know confident replies. We're in the right place, but we've got more work to do. Um, I thought she she really you know was was terrific, quite honestly. That said, you know we know where we are in the market at the moment. Um, just wait till we get a few more more hurdles um, and, and then of course, then she'll be really tested. The one thing I think that could have been asked a bit more clearly yesterday was um, if you look at the revised forecast, particularly for consumer demand, in just three months since the last statement on monetary policy, they've basically halved what they're expecting for private consumption um, in the June quarter and, and significantly lower in the, in the December quarter this year. So, you know, that's a big slowdown from where they were a few months ago. And that, that tells you a lot about the direction of interest rates. Yeah, that's really yeah. interesting because no one's actually um, in all our discussions pointed that one out, Nikki. So they've, they've halved the forecast basically compared to three months ago. So they must be expecting a pretty chunky slowdown. And maybe when she talked about all the uncertainty, uh, that's what they're kind of looking, she, to me she kept on referring to we need to see more data. So they're concerned mm -hmm. of the slowdown but they just need more confirmation that inflation hasn't become too embedded. Is that kind of how you read it? Yeah, um, it's almost like they don't believe their good luck. That you know, we were, you know, the forecast was for four and a half percent in the in the December quarter. We got four point one, um, and yet they're just not ready to accept that you know we are going down the right path. Or indeed, you know, what happens when we, well, we, December month was still had, had a three in front of it. So we're, we're definitely getting there. But I guess is, you know, is that last little bit a bit sticky? If you look at things like um, insurance, and she talked a little bit about that, house prices and, and, and rents and utilities, all things that the RBA can't do anything about, but that might mean that inflation stays a little bit higher or at the high end of the band for a little bit longer. But that, you know, monetary policy has to look through that because it can't affect it. On the other hand, do they just hold back on demand? I, I think it's going to be a difficult year for them. They're not, they're not out of the woods yet. Nikki, um, the RBA has been always really worried, of course, about wage growth, productivity. I'm interested in your take on Labor getting it across this deal for workers to ignore after hours calls from bosses, this right to disconnect law. How does that change the productivity landscape, if at all? We're going to be watching you on that one. Look, it's... it's <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I seem to be connected 24-7, but then I'm my own boss, so um, I'm very, very demanding. Um, but I think in all seriousness, you know, I think we've got a little bit out of hand with work-life balance. And I think, you know, there are some industries, obviously, you know, if you're a doctor, you're going to be on call at, at certain times. But the idea that the average office worker, um, you know, is, is just can answer emails or calls at any time of the day or night, it's not healthy mentally. And it actually can be productivity um you know, decreting because, um, you know, people are just not going to be as, as, as well as they otherwise uh, would be if they're stressed all the time. So I'm not sure that that's going to make a difference. What I do wonder about is, and I thought Michelle Bullock handled this again very well yesterday, you know, she was quite calm about the outlook, um, said we've got some noise from, from COVID and we certainly do. But if you look at business investment, you look at tech, the role of technology, um, you know, everyone, I've just come back from Davos and everybody is just talking Gen AI, Gen AI, even when you're talking about climate change or inequality, everything's about Gen AI. Um, you know, it's everywhere, even in places like the fashion industry, you might not expect. So I think, you know, we're on the right path with, with productivity and I, I wouldn't be getting too concerned just yet if we're still getting 
you know, soft numbers a year from now, by the end of this year, then you would start to say there's something else going on and we do need to worry. Nikki, I spoke with um, Stephen Halmarik from Combank earlier on today. So I've, I've been spoilt for choice with fabulous economists and there is quite a divergence in views between Shane Oliver calling a rate cut earlier, Stephen Halmarik in, in September and the likes of um, HSBC uh, out of next year. On that spectrum, where are you sitting for the first rate cut? <laughs> Look, I think it'll be in the December quarter. I think they really, you know, they're being very cautious, as I said. And unless, and this is a possibility, the inflation numbers and the unemployment numbers will be important too. But unless the inflation numbers continue to surprise a lot lower to the downside, um, then I think, you know, it's going to be hard for them to move before then. You know, you've got to remember how low rates were beforehand. And, and, and Michelle Bullock made this point yesterday. They, they just had to get back to normal. A whole load of those, you know, 13 rate rises were just about getting back to normal. And, you know, now we're in the tighter zone, but it's not exceptionally tight. So I think, you know, they've got time to wait, but things are soft and they're just going to have to balance this. It's, it, it will be a hard task. Nikki, just a final quick question. You mentioned you were in Davos, a life goal of mine to get there one day. You mentioned Gen AI being at the forefront. What else did you learn? What were some of the exciting discussions you heard? Um, look, some everybody is also talking about sustainability and it's no longer just climate change. It's about a nature positive economy as well. It's about making sure that you've got you know real wages for people in, in developing economies. Um, that was that was everywhere. And how do you benchmark these things? How do you report on them? Getting rid of green washing and pink washing and all, all the other washing that goes 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 with that. Um, disinformation and misinformation, which is the top of the risks, um, really some scary stuff coming out of that. One guy from the Stimson Institute in the US basically saying that by 2030, we won't be able to distinguish fact from fiction on the, on the internet. Um, and for a World Economic Forum, there was very little discussion about the economy. I think everybody feels that inflation is heading in the right direction. Yes, there's some problems here and there, but um, people are a lot less concerned about the economics and much more about geopolitics and, and technology and climate. Oh, wow, Nikki, uh, an environment positive economy. Gee, that's music to my ears. It'd be lovely to see our koalas not being run over every day. So that's my little two cents worth. Nikki, absolutely thank with you there. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us today on the COB. We've really enjoyed our chat. Me too, thank you. All right, Danny, let's take a look at the leaders and laggards in the session today, kicking it off with the leaders. Chalice no, mining. Chalice Mining. I think oh, we might have a, have a happy happy host oh, here. Not really, not really, <laughs> because I, I do believe I may have bought it higher than that. <laughs> um, Liontown Resources also having a good day. A lot of momentum actually in the lithium space today. Absolutely, and also Champion Iron Ore up 5.7%. Now let's have a look at some of the larger cap laggards. Santos, no surprise, off by 5%. CSR, off almost by 5%. They copped a downgrade just because the price has been up 26% recently. Eagers, which was up a couple of days ago, down today. And Domino's also off by 3%. And no surprises, really, probably Boss Energy. Uh, a little bit of profit taking coming into the uranium space with that stock off by 2%. Yep, let's have a look at the small cap leaders. Latin resources up 16%, Porteous Memory, Meteoric, Meteoric Resources, 88 Energy and Patriot Battery Metals, where somebody needs to go in and put a couple of spaces there, I think. It's and, hard to read. And let's have a look at the laggards in the smalls. So Bougainville Copper, my gosh, this is volatile, off by 22% today. Uh, Air Tasker off by 15 and 29 metals also getting a little bit of shellacking down 7%. I didn't know what Airtasker was until I moved back six months yeah. ago. It's fabulous. Yeah. I constantly am an Airtasker user. It's not a great stock, though. Not a great company. Well, though, hey you know, if you need a painter, painting hung and you don't have a, 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 handyman. a handyman, I was about <laughs> to say a, another word. But um, anyway, let's get to the stock of the day. It was Amcor, Jess Amir from Moomoo and Josh Barker from Macro Capital shared their verdict on today's episode of The Call. I'm looking for, um, I guess, quasi uh, exposure to the staples food beverage sector. Um, yeah, it could be, it could be a buy if that's if that's something that you do want. But I do think that there are better opportunities out there. So 
I guess, bullish on the back of the earnings beat. Uh, but I guess better opportunities out there. Probably a pretty good recurring theme of, of today's show um, around what prices that um, these businesses can, can charge and then also the, the inputs and the, and the margin squeeze there. So I've had to lower that, which is um, you know interesting in, in this sort of inflationary environment. You know, everyone's charging more for stuff, right. uh, but these guys are, are lowering it. So they got some positives coming through. The sale of their Russian business resulted in a decent cash flow position. So... Uh, they're doing well. Um, I think it's a very stable business, obviously being in the in the staples part. It's going to pay around 5%. Um, it would be a hold for me, but uh, I think there's okay. better opportunities out there, particularly in reporting season. Okay. Okay, now let's check in and see what is happening overnight because, uh, well, it is again a very, very busy week. So US trade balance, more earnings reports from Uber, PayPal, Disney and Mattel. And there's that huge deal, isn't mm, there, between the sports D- streaming yeah, tie-up. Yeah, Disney, um, oh, I had this written down in my notes. Disney, Fox and Warner Brothers Discovery. So a sports streaming service to try and capture younger sports fans who are not tuning in to traditional TV platforms. Yeah, no, a lot going on in that space. Um, also, ECB Economic Bulletin and FOMC member Bowman Speaks. Gosh, there are so many, aren't there, that love to have a chat. Oh, they love a chat. All right, <laughs> let's have a look at what's happening on our market tomorrow or in the region. Uh, Japan Trade Balance, China PPI and CPI data. Here we've got a couple of earnings reports. I think BWP came through today. Alliance um, Aviation is there. Yeah. And, uh, they it, might d- be today because um, yes. ResMed was ex-div as well today. Yeah. So we will bring you all the Actually, latest, of check. course, in terms of what is going to come through uh, tomorrow. But uh, let's just have a quick look at where the market tracks. And here, and, yep, up five tenths of 1% there on the SIBO 200. I'm just giving quickly to let everybody know. So tomorrow we have AGL, uh, uh, Mervac, Transurban, URW, and I've just, it's its the Charter Hall Long Whale Reach oh, as well. Oh, there you so go. So there's, those are the ones coming out. And probably those China CPI and PPI numbers will be quite important. Absolutely. They'll be very, very key. So sorry about that. We had the wrong board up, but we corrected. Never wrong for long. Um, the ASX 200 up half of 1%, 7,617 on the close. And really, Danny, it's just Santos weighing down that energy sector so that'll be a huge story to follow we will bring you all of that uh, tomorrow the follow-up from Woodside walking away from the potential Santos 80 billion dollar merger and so much more absolutely have a great evening everyone